finite state machine, which uh, actually controls everything that happens in the boundary scan architecture within each device. After watching this presentation, you will be able to explain how the sequence of ones and zeros driven to the test mode select pin uh, actually controls the operation of the um, test access port controller and therefore of the wall uh, boundary scan architecture within the device. Uh, this is actually the main slide in this presentation, and the last one. And uh, please notice that um, the uh, state diagram for the uh, state machine that uh, corresponds to the test access port controller comprises two main paths, one related to the instruction register uh, scan operations, so uh, bit streams shifted through the uh, instruction register path, and the other one corresponding to data register scan operation, that is, that is to say, uh, any bit streams that go through one of these select one data register. So any uh, bit streams sent to the instruction register will correspond to a state transition in this section, and any uh, bit streams going through the selected data register will correspond to a state transition in this section. Notice also that we have basically two types of states in this diagram. Uh, we have the so-called, uh, we may call them stable states, where we can uh, stay for as long, uh, as many test clock cycles as needed. Uh, if the test mode select pin is held at zero, in this case, for example, we will remain in the run test idle state indefinitely. On the other hand, there are states where we can only remain for one clock cycle, such as select data register. In this case, at the next rising edge in TCK, it will either go to select instruction register, if TMS is 1, or you will go to capture data register, if TMS is 0. Uh, I have also decided to uh, include in the upper right the um, boundary scan cell uh, circuit indicating what is the operating mode corresponding to each uh, position in this state diagram. So as we will move through the uh, state diagram we will see what happens to the operating mode of each boundary scan cell in the device. Uh, well, when starting from the test logic reset state, all the boundary scan cells will be in transparent mode. That is to say, the um, circuit will be able to operate in its uh, normal mode. This is also the uh, state that automatically loads the bypass instruction, and this is how the device operates at power up. Uh, we will now consider a sequence of uh, operations that consists of sending in the external test instruction, for example, so we shall go to shift instruction register state, and then after, uh, after having sent the external test instruction, we will send one test vector to the boundary scan register, so we will have to go through to the shift data register state, and in this case the selected data register will be the boundary scan register. So to do so, we will start by driving a 0 to TMS, and upon uh, driving one test clock cycle, we will move from test logic reset to run test idle. Now, uh, by driving a 1 to TMS, we go to select data register, then to select instruction register, and then by driving two zeros, we will go through capture instruction register into shift instruction register. Notice that uh, nothing happened in the operating mode of the boundary scan cell, so 
up to this point the circuit is still operating normally and actually what happens when we uh, reach it, the shift instruction register state is simply that this path has been established that is to say when reaching this state the test access port controller finite state machine has uh, generated the control signal for this multiplexer uh, in order to set up this path. So we will be able to shift in the new instruction while at the same time the pattern that was captured when going through capture instruction register state and which comprises the 0, 1 in the two last bit positions will be sent out. So uh, if we assume that we have an 8-bit instruction register, we will have to stay here for 7. Notice that I said an 8-bit instruction register uh, and that we will stay here for 7 clock cycles. And this means that at the 8th or last clock cycle, we have to set TMS to 1 so that while shifting the last bit in, into the instruction register, we will also leave the shift instruction register state. Uh, we have gone to the exit 1 instruction register state and from there to the update instruction register and notice that this is when the new instruction uh, is sent to the outputs of the instruction register so when it is seen by the decoder and this is also when the uh, operating mode of the boundary scan cells change Recall that uh, initially, starting from test logic reset state, we had the bypass instruction loaded into the instruction register. Now we have shifted in the external test instruction, so the boundary scan cells have gone from transparent to uh, controllability mode. So uh, if I go back one point, you see that uh, it is when entering the update instruction register state that the operating mode of the cell changes. Now we have uh, loaded the new instruction so we have to continue on to shift data register and to do so the shortest path is to go to select data register then by driving a zero and another zero we go to capture data register and than to shift data register. Look at the uh, operating mode of the boundary scan cell while we go through these two states. So when going into capture data register the input multiplexer is set up as shown here and the uh, boundary scan cells will capture what is present at their input. This capture operation will take place as we leave the cell that is, as we leave this state, that is to say, at the next rising edge of TCK when we are in the capture data register state. So, as we go out, we capture what is present at the uh, inputs of the cells. And uh, when reaching the shift data register state, the input multiplexer will be set as shown here. We are now able to shift in the uh, required test vector and uh, then again uh, if we have say uh, 18 cells we will remain here for 17 clock cycles and then at the last clock cycle we will set TMS to 1 so that we leave the shift data register state as we shift in the last bit. Finally um, when reaching the update data register state, the outputs of the cells will be updated, so the latch stage receives what has been temporarily stored in the capture shift stage in every cell. So let's go back one uh, test clock cycle. When going through uh, from exit one to update data register, notice that this uh, connection here will be highlighted, meaning that it is when we reach the update data register state that the new test vector shifted in comes out to the uh, output pins.